Today, God wants to say some things to us. It's a holiday weekend. We all know that. I, uh, I could say a lot of stuff today, but I'm going I'm to try not to be too repetitive today. But because the same holidays roll around every year, we have to say some of the same things every year. On Mother's Day, you talk about mothers, and on Father's Day, you talk about fathers, and on, on uh, Memorial Day, you talk about the memorial. And, but on, on this day, we talk about our independence. And I can't answer for you, but I can answer for me. I'm still glad to be an American. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm going to talk about some of those things for just a little bit today. But I just believe the Lord, the Lord is here to do a, a work in our lives today. God wants to speak some things to some people here this morning. And uh, I, I trust that you will leave here different than how you walked in this building today. Hallelujah. Somebody said amen. I'm not going to hold you long today, but I just feel the presence of the Lord so strong. And I know the crowd is short, but what, what, and I told the Lord this morning in prayer, what I have to say today is, it's to whoever is not only here, but those of you watching by internet. You know, we got a great internet church too. I don't know if you know that or not. We got a lot of folks all over the country that watch. Some are, are members of this church and they just moved away and they still are members of this church. And there's people that worship the Lord with us on the internet every Sunday morning. Welcome. I don't say enough about you, but welcome. We're glad you're tuning in. I want to talk today about true freedom. Somebody say true freedom. This is a freedom weekend, freedom week. We're going to, matter of fact, I was at Caney Lake last night and watched the fireworks, beautiful display of fireworks on Caney Lake, and I, I was reminded with all the colors and all the, the, uh, the booms and the sky lighting up and all the things that were happening, what a, uh, what a great country we live in. We celebrate because of our independence. It was fought for, and it was, it was attained and we have great history in America uh, concerning Independence Day. It's, it's, re, it's, it's actually reliving where we came from and what God has done for us and what this nation means to us. I, and I, you, this is not political. This is just a fact. It doesn't matter who you are or what party you're with. We're all proud to be an American. We're all glad that we are living in what has been termed as the greatest nation on earth, and I believe that. And uh, so Independence Day will come on Tuesday, and there will be all kind of parties and hot dogs and hamburgers and grilling out and a lot of good stuff going on. All that's good, and uh, that nothing wrong with that. But America is a unique place. We're not like any other nation. We're not like anybody else on earth. We have freedom here that most places do not have. Can you say amen? When I, when I started thinking about the things of today, and just bear with me, I'm just laying a little groundwork for what I really want to say today. I, I thought about the freedoms that we do have. The, one of the greatest things that we have and I will say it this way sometime, is freedom of speech. We're able to say and express ourselves and reach in uh, to our world with our own voice. We have, we have the opportunity of freedom of speech where many, many countries and nations of the world do not have that. And then we have what I love. It's called freedom of religion. You're not bound by some, some heritage that you came from that you have to do this and you have to do that in the form of religion to serve some idol god or somebody or something that, 
the, the, your nation expresses to you is the way you have to worship. We can worship the way we want to worship. Thank God for the freedom of worship in America. And somebody said amen. So there, there are many, many freedoms. And if you ask any one of us today, we would tell you that we are free people. We would tell you that we have the freedom of speech and the freedom of religion and all the other freedoms that come with being a citizen of our country. And that, no doubt, is true. Nobody tells you when to get up. Nobody tells you when to go to bed. Nobody tells you what you have to do and what you do not have to do. Not even the church can do that. You're a free spirit, and you are a free human being in so many respects. But that's not the freedom, and that's not the things I want to talk about today. Because while we are free, and we can say what we want to say, write what we want to write, go where we want to go, I'm here to tell you we are the most captive people that has ever been in the history of mankind. And the reason for it is, is because our world has stepped into an era of, of, of illicit things and immoral things and things that we never saw coming because we were so sometime naive as the church of the living God. We have never dealt with more drug addiction than we're dealing with now. We have never dealt with more alcoholism than we have, are dealing with now. We, are, we have never dealt with more sexual addiction than we are dealing with now. And pornography is off of the charts and people are addicted like they've never been addicted before. There is more depression in our world than there's ever been. There is more oppression upon people than there have ever been. I could go on and on and on and on because people get caught up in lifestyles and, and activities and things that go on. And the first thing you know, they have drifted far from their roots and they have drifted into the sinful nature of mankind. But here's what I come to preach to you on this Sunday morning. I cannot allow the world to pull me into its mold. Hear me right now. You nor anybody else can dictate to me that I can or cannot live for God the right way. I am determined. Nobody is going to send me to hell. Nobody's going to drag me to hell. Nobody's going to make me go to hell. If I go to hell, it will be of my own, and my own making and my own doing. But here's what I've come to tell you today. There is addiction, but there is freedom. There is freedom of the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you, we are dealing with mental things in our world like we've never dealt with. People get up and don't know what to do. They go to bed with pills and drugs and, and they try to get sleep. And when they wake up in the morning, the oppression of the hell that we live in is upon us. I'm preaching to you today that we need a good old apostolic anointing that will free every man in this house today. Because it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's, and look, it's, it's not my words. It's not what we do here. But it's the anointing that will break the yoke in your life. You say, Pastor, I'm a, I'm a Pentecostal. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've been baptized in the name of the Lord. Woo! Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Please don't take me wrong. There's more hidden stuff in this building today. When I was praying this morning, I said, Lord, I don't know every man's heart. I don't know where you've been this week. I don't know what you've done. But here's what I do know. I do know that the Holy Ghost spoke to me today and said they don't need just freedom in America. They need true freedom. And true freedom is when your heart's on fire with the Holy Ghost. And when you get up in the 
morning and the Lord takes you by the hand and walks you through the day when you don't have the weight of the world on your shoulders and your mind is not so contaminated. I'm preaching to you today. We need some freedom in this house. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Here's what Isaiah said. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath adorned me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. What's this? To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. The Old Testament was dealing with it. Isaiah was saying to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Do you understand? There's a garment of praise that you can wear instead of wearing all that junk around you that's weighting you down. Get rid of your spirit of heaviness and put on a garment of praise this morning that they may be called the trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord and that he might be glorified. This is the work of the Lord my friend that he could proclaim liberty to the captives. Somebody needs to fall at the foot of the cross today and be set free. Well, I don't have an addiction. Okay. Not that you see or not that anybody else sees. What are you dealing with in the quietness when you lay down at night and you got a spirit towards somebody. And you said words you shouldn't have said. And you've listened to garbage you shouldn't have listened to. And you got stuff weighting you down. And so the devil isn't doing anything but dragging you further away from God. It don't have to be smoking cigarettes. It don't have to be, it don't have to be gambling at the casino every Saturday night. It don't have, come on, I'm talking about addictions. It don't have to be turning up Crown Royal every weekend. It don't have to be popping needles in your veins and shooting up so you could forget what you're doing and where you're going. You see, the world lives like that, but I wonder if there's a little bitterness inside. I wonder if there's a little addiction of hatred inside. I wonder if you got a little malice down inside of you. I wonder if there's a little strife, and I'm preaching to you this morning, you can and like it or not like it. We are dealing with stuff in our mentality on a daily basis that is dragging people to hell. I didn't come to tickle you ears today. I come to preach to you this morning. I come to tell you today that you don't have to live another day with that stuff in your crawl. That business on your back. You don't have to live another day. I'm telling you right now in the Holy Ghost that all that stuff the devil's lying to you about is exactly that, a lie. And he can't control you if you don't let him. And you got to square your... Let me tell you, I, I, I read I read the Acts chapter 16 today. I read it again early this morning where Paul and Silas were doing ministry and a girl that was demonic got to follow them around and you know what she would do? She would point them out and say, these men are the servants of the Most High God. These men are the servants of the Most High God. And she followed them around and was trying to interrupt what God was doing. And Paul turned around and he said to her, I rebuke that spirit. Come out of her now. Come out of her right now. And that spirit came out of her. 
Now, I told you that to tell you this. It wasn't over because they grabbed Paul and Silas and throwed them in the inner prison because they had just done a mighty work of God. But yeah, those Pharisees, those hypocrites, they weren't happy with what was happening with the man of God and him telling them all the time what God was going to do. So they put them not just in jail, but they put them in the inner prison. Would somebody hear me today? You can can be in shackles. You can be dark. You can be desolate. You can be desperate. You can be as deep in the prison as you can go. But what will get you out is not molly grabbing over your junk. What will get you out is to throw your hands up. And if you can't do that, just sit there and start singing and praising God at the darkest moment of the night because he is coming to set you free. This is why I didn't stay at the lake. I got somewhat to say unto thee. Hear me when I tell you the devil's a liar and he's a father of every lie. And what he wants to do is get in and tear up friendships and families and churches. What he wants to do is to destroy your mind and to make you dwell on the negative every day of your life. Because if he can get you thinking about it, he can get you doing it. If he can get you involved in it, he can destroy everything about you. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about true freedom today. Oh, I'm glad for the red, white, and blue. I talked to one of my friends this morning and said, what's your preaching today he said I'm preaching red white and blue red is the blood of Jesus white is the purity of the saints blue is for water baptism I said man that sounds good Mine's not going to be just that easy because I'm going to preach today about true freedom. Walking out from under the shackles that the devil's got you weighted down with. Walking out the oh, they, My mother always told me, son, you get what you preach. So today, I'm preaching freedom of the Holy Ghost. I'm preaching freedom from the world you live in. Freedom from the sin that has you bound. Freedom from the addiction in your life. So here's what Jesus did. He came along in Luke chapter 4 and quoted Isaiah. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. But notice what it said. And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and he sat down and all the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. You know why? Because he said, here's the gospel in a nutshell. This is what he sent me to do. Deliverance to the captives. When I knelt to pray early this morning in my office, I love those times when I'm alone in my office in this church. But when I knelt to pray and I was asking God to help me and asking God to give me direction, he gave me two words, two words. One of them was captive and the other one was snare. Two words. That's what he said to me. Two words, captive and I knew, I knew somewhat where I was going today. But he's, he, he, he brought those two words. And I began to look. And the Bible said he wants to deliver the captive. He wants to get the captive out of their bondage. He, he didn't say those that were out there. Look, we all know that the devil's having a heyday in the world. You know that? I mean, he's, he's got his best foot forward right now. Everything he can do, he is doing right now. And the world is going crazy. I don't know if you believe that or not, but the world, pardon me, but they're stupid.
They'll say anything. They'll do anything. And if they hadn't tried it yet, they're ready to try it. Are you with me? The world is in trouble. And we know they're captive. And they're, they're, they're in places of, of great sin and addiction. They're there. They're not really free. But I'm not talking about the world today. I'm talking about us. Because you see, what we don't see is that we can be captive just like they can be captive. Because we get caught up in what we think. We think, oh, it's all right. It's okay. It, no, 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 no. You can't get caught up in some things. Because when you do, when you do, it's going to destroy your soul. <laughs> and life consists of more than the abundance of the things the man possesses. It consists of what is in here. What are you? What do you think about? What do you dwell on? What do you live for? Where are you at? I'm just preaching to you on this Sunday morning that the Lord is trying to deliver the captive and set at liberty them that are bruised. And when they when they fastened their eyes on him in the temple that day and he had, he had laid down the book and handed it back to the minister, the Bible said he began to say unto them, this day the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Paul told Timothy, he said, the servant of the Lord must not strive but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. Watch this. Watch this. This is my job this morning to speak to you in love and in meekness and in truth so that the Bible said that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. The captive are in a snare and the snare of the devil, he said, who, who are taken captive by him at his will. In other words, you let the devil have his way in your life. Life. You let the devil have his way in all that you're doing. You need to understand where that is coming from because if you're snared and you're captive by him at his will, not God's will, but at his will, you, my friend, need a deliverer on this Sunday morning. And God sent me here to tell you there's freedom, real freedom, if you really are looking for it. He went on to say, and, 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 and I just read that scripture, but who've taken captive. Everybody say captive. Captive. That means you're incarcerated. That means you're bound up. That means you have no freedom. You may be able to talk. You may be able to march. You may be able to do whatever America's telling you to do, but your spirit is bound and your mind is bound and your heart is bound and, and the devil is having his way with you. I've just come to loose you this morning. I want you to be aware of what's happening because the Bible said, now the Lord is that spirit. 2 Corinthians 3.17, you ought to go mark it in your Bible. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. There's not captive. There's not snare. There's liberty in God today. When the spirit starts to move like it's moving on this Sunday morning, somebody is about to shake their chains off and walk out of this house a free man. I wouldn't embarrass you for anything today. But we aren't exempt from the things that's happening around us. I'm, I'm, I'm being very careful. I don't even know why I'm saying what I'm about to say. But I'm going to say it because I feel it in the Holy Ghost. And the way I preach, if the Holy Ghost tells me to say it, I'm going to say it. But there's some pornography addiction right here in this room today that you need to get it right with God. Don't blame me. Blame him. So Paul said, stand therefore, fast therefore in the liberty, the liberty. Wherewith Christ has made us free. 
and be not entangled again. In other words, you've already been there. Don't go back there. When God sets you free and you get liberty, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't go back into the, into the sail and lock the door behind you and get back in the prison again. He said, stand in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made you free. When God sets you free this morning, you need to walk out of here and never go back to that captivity and that bondage again. You need to let that subside in your past because he didn't set you free for you to go back. You know what? Paul said, if I build again the things I once destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. I don't want to become a transgressor. I don't want to fall back into the sin that God delivered me from. I don't want to walk back into the captivity and the snares of the devil. Somebody needs to hear me today. When God sets you free today, don't ever go back there again. I'm not preaching just to, I told the Lord this, look, you know this, I'm 70 years old, I ain't trying to impress nobody. I ain't got to impress nobody. I'm on the downhill side and I'm telling you, I'm letting her coast because it's getting fast enough, I don't have to give it any gas. If you think I came here to impress you with a beautiful sermon today, you are short-changed and religiously chipped. I came here today to stir your mind because God said, God said, you don't need to be captive to that another day. You don't need to let the fall into that snare another moment. You need to be set free. And the only way to be set free is the Spirit of the Lord come upon you. And the Spirit of the Lord can deliver you. Does anybody believe what I'm preaching to you on a Sunday morning? God can set you free. I said God can set you free. I said I want to say it again but the preacher last week told you God can do anything and he can but let me tell you specifically today God can set you free. Let me close with this. We don't get out early today. That's good. Let me close with this. I read, I read the story again of a guy that was in the Gadarenes. We call him, Bible didn't call him this, but we call him the demoniac of Gadara because he was a man that was possessed with devils. Bible said he dwelt among tombs and no man could bind him. No, not with chains. They couldn't, they couldn't bind him. You listening? Because they'd often bound him with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. I, we had a discussion the other day at some of us at our men's luncheon. We talked about things in the past and people that claim to be devil-possessed. And I've, I've watched people that claim to be devil-possessed and uh, I thought they were devil-possessed or somebody else thought they were devil-possessed. Let me just tell you something. If they're devil-possessed, you ain't going to hold them down. If they're devil-possessed, you better back up and get the power of Jesus in your life. That's what happened. That's what happened to those that dealt with the, the demons in the book of Acts seven sons of Sceva when the devil spoke out and said Paul I know and Jesus I know but who are you and just proceeded to rip their clothes off hello somebody devil possessed you better you better hit your knees and just pray for them you can't hold them you can't even chain them up I said, this man broke all the fetters and all the chains. They couldn't tame him. He was a wild man. Always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in tombs, lived in tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus, 
the Bible said he ran and worshiped him. Whew, I got chills thinking about it. The Lord looked at it and said, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. I'm, I'm just hurrying through. And the Lord looked at him and said, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. He didn't have one devil, he had many devils. Everybody with me? Act like you are, whether you are or not. And so the Lord delivered him. The Bible said, Forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirit went out. Here's what, here's what happened. The devil started begging. You know, you get the devil to where he'll beg, and he'll leave you alone. And he knew that he was going out of this man. And so the devil starts begging, just let us, let us go into the swine. There's a herd of swine over here. Let us go into the swine. And, and the Bible said that the Lord, the Lord said, okay. And he sent him into the swine. The Bible said the unclean spirits went out, entered into the swine, and the herd, the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There was about 2,000 pigs that the Lord let get choked to death in the sea because the demons went in the pigs. Some of y'all don't believe that. And I said all that to say this. They that fed the swine told the city and the country, and they went out to see what it was all about. Here's what it said in verse, this is Mark chapter 5 and verse 15. You can put that up if you can. Here's what the Bible said. <clears throat> They all went out to see what, it was, what was done. And they come to Jesus and they see that man, the one that had all the demons. They see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting, clothed, and in his right mind. Set free. You want to know what freedom is? The demoniac of Gadara can tell you what freedom is. When your life has been wrecked and ruined and you're cutting yourself with stones and living in tombs and crying day and night when nobody can tame you and you can break all the chains, you can break all the fetters, nothing can hold you back. But Jesus can speak a few simple words to you and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it's gone. That's true freedom. And so they come out to see this guy whom all the town and everybody in the country was afraid of. Are you listening to me? Come on now. And you know what? They come expecting to see him as he was. But when Jesus gets through with you, you won't be like you were. You won't be the same old guy. When he delivers you, you're delivered. When he takes it out, he takes it out for good. Could I have a witness here today? Is there anybody here that's ever been delivered by God? And you know that deliverance is real. You know that what he can do, he can do it over and over and over and over. If he'll do it for one, he'll do it for the next one. If he'll do it for me, he'll do it for you. We're talking about independence of what? Of the demonic spirits of hell that are trying to destroy you and I today. Stand with me.